جزا الله بالخيرات عنا إماتا لنا نقل القرآن عذبا وسلسالا فمنهم بدور سابعة قد تواساطت سماء العلا والعاد لزهرا وكمالا إن شاء الله تعالى ما beloved brothers and sisters in this episode I want to speak about تقسيم العلماء القراءات إلى أصول وفرش the scholars of Qiraat, they divided the Qiraat into Usul and Farsh. What is Usul and what is Farsh? I'll explain it soon, inshallah ta'ala. But before I go in, but before I go in, I want to inform you that the ulama al Qiraat, rahimahumullah, may Allah be pleased with them. They gave a lot of importance in teaching the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, memorizing it, preserving it in memory, passing it on in the minute details regarding it. They also transmitted in their authorship and in their books, the differences, the categorization, and the science behind the recitation of the Quran and the different ways of reciting and the variations in words. Every little detail that you need, they passed it onto, uh, onto you. They've given it to you. So what is usul and what is farsh? Usul is al-ahkam al-kulliyya al-muttarida. The usul are rulings that are continuous and comprehensive. They apply on just about every circumstance in every situation. Just about every situation, it applies on it. And it's a, a ruling that you memorize, it's a principle you memorize, and you apply it over the board. You apply it on every place where you find this. Let me give you an example. Silatu Mim al Jama. The ulama of Qiraat, they Discuss Silatu Mim al Jama. If you go to the Qira of Ibn Kathir and Qalun an Nafi' bi Khulfil Anhu, when it comes to Silatu Mim al Jama, they, if after it is a word which is mutaharrik, then they read it as Qawluhu Ta'ala an Am Ta'alayhimu. غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمُ Ibn Kathir and Qalun and Nafi' بِخُلْفٍ عَنْهُ They do sila, they connect that meme to the next word if it is what? متحرك Warsh on the other hand If after the meme there is a hamz says hamza What does it do? It then does it سواء عليهم أأنذرتهم أم There's a hamza on the am, right? So what you do, what Warsh does is connects it. This is a qa'idah mutarida for Warsh and a qa'idah mutarida for Ibn Kathir and Qalun. And he applies, you just look at the meme, uh, silatu meme al you look at the meme al if after it is a, har if there's a, a letter which has a haraka on it, Qalun, and Ibn Kathir read in this way. If, it got, if there's a Hamza after the, uh, the meme, Warsh recites it as uh, the Sila comes for Warsh. And Warsh then does the Sila. You memorize it once and you apply it over the board. It's a principle you memorize once. For example, Ha al Damir, also known as Ha al Kinaya, also Al Ahkam al Muta'aliqat bin Hamzat. Warsh, for example, if Fa al Kalima, the fa of the kalima, in the first letter of the kalima, fa ul kalima, if it's got a hamza in it, warsh, he changes it. For example, yu minun, he says. Ya kulun. Ya kulun, right? Mu minun, yu minun. He reads it as yu minun. Ya kulun. This is a qaida for warsh, you just memorize it and you learn it and you apply it. The same with the fath and the imala and the idgham and the idhar and etc. 
ولذلك the scholars they say that the usul generally revolves around issues related to lahajat and lugat. That's the reason why the change in is happening. It's not got much to do with meaning. Whereas al-farsh is related to meaning. Honey, it's connected to meaning. The second one is al-farsh. Farsh is slightly tricky when it comes to the qiraat. The farsh, it changes. There's not one qa'ida mutarida yadbituha. There's not one qa'ida that you can memorize that you can apply everywhere. It changes from one situation to another. For example, Maliki Yawmiddin in Surah Al-Fatiha. Asim and Kisai, they recite it as Maliki Yawmiddin with the alif. Baqi Sab'a, the other remaining seven, they do it bighayri alif, without no alif. So here you see, Asim and Kisai on one side saying Maliki Yawmiddin. And you have the other seven remaining Qurra, they read it as Maliki Yawmiddin. So does that mean every time I see the word Malik and Malik in the Quran, it's the same thing? No. That doesn't apply only except on Surah Al-Fatiha. If you go, for example, to Surah Ali Imran, where Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He says, قُلِ اللَّهُمَّ مَالِكَ الْمُلْكَ All of the Qurra, they read it with Alif. قُلِ اللَّهُمَّ مَالِكَ الْمُلْكَ None of them came and said, قُلِ اللَّهُمَّ مَالِكَ الْمُلْكَ they didn't say that. Jami'u al-Qurra. They all recited it as an alif. Qul illahumma malik al-mulk. Surah al-Nas. Malik al-Nas. Ilahi al-Nas. Malik al-Nas. Jami'u al-Qurra. All of the recitals, they read it as malik al-Nas. No one read it as malik al-Nas. So what do you see? This is not qa'ida mutarida. It's not a one principle. You see Malik here, the Asim and Kisai read it like this. The other remaining seven read it, recited it like this. So that means wherever I see it, Asim and Kisai are going to be together and the other Qurra are going to be together. No. Each situation is different to the other one. This is one of the strongest arguments that the Muslim can make against the Orientalist. Which is what? Maliki Yawm din can be recited as Maliki Yawm din because it was taken from the Prophet in those two ways. Lakin Maliki Nas was taken from the Prophet in one way only. The Prophet never recited it in any other way. And if the issue of the Quran was based on ijtihad and it was based on qiyas and independent reasoning, then it would have been wherever I find the word Malik, I can read it as Malik or Malik. No. It shows that the Quran is a talaqi wal mushafaha. It is a riwayah wal naql. It's transmission. It is to take it from the Prophet. Another example. Qawluhu ta'ala. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he said in Surah Nisa, an tarithu nisa'a karhan. The word karhan, that's how it's recited. Surah Al-Tawbah, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He says, قُلْ أَنْفِقُوا طَوْعًا أَوْ كَرْحًا Hamza and Kisai, they read it as Kurhan in both of those ayats. In Surah Al-Nisa and Surah and in Surah Al-Tawbah, they read it as أَنْ تَرِثُ النِّسَاءَ كُرْحًا قُلْ أَنْفِقُوا طَوْعًا أَوْ كُرْحًا That's how they read it. Hamza wal Kisai. The other remaining Qurra, they all read it as a Fatha. They say, أَنْ تَرِثُ النِّسَاءَ كَرْحًا أَوْ قُلْ أَنْفِقُوا طَوْعًا أَوْ كَرْحًا وَلِذَلِكَ الْإِمَامُ الشَّاطِبِي رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ He says وَضُمَّ هُنَا كَرْحًا وَعِنْدَ بَرَاءَةٍ شِهَابٌ وَفِي الْأَحْقَافِ ثُبِّتَ مَعْقِلًا That Surah Bara'a mean Surah Al-Tawbah and Surah Al-Nisa you read it as كَرْحًا أَوْ كُرْحًا يعني حمزة الكسائية both reading as كُرْحًا باقي القراء are reading it as كَرْحًا come to Surah Al-Ahqaf Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He said, حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ كُرْحًا وَوَضَعَتْهُ كُرْحًا Here, Asim and Ibn Dhaqwan, they read it as كُرْحًا حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ كُرْحًا وَوَضَعَتْهُ كُرْحًا Honey, it's, look at this, it's shocking, right? Asim, whose qira'a we have today, we read Hafs and Asim. In one situation, Hafs, uh, sorry, Asim is reading as what? Antarithun Nisa'a, 
karhan. Qul anfiqu taw'an aw karhan. He's reciting like that. When he came to Surah Al-Ahqaf, he's not reading as karhan as he was doing before. It's changed. He's reading as what? Hamalatu ummuhu kurhan. He's reading it. Wa wada'athu kurhan. Why? Because this is not qa'idah muttari. This is called farsh. They're furuq. You need to memorize them. Wa dhumma huna karhan. That's what Shatib is saying. Wa dhumma huna karhan wa inda bara'atin. Shihabun wa fil ahqafi thubbita ma'qilan. That Hamza and Kisai, they read it as antarithu nisa'a kurhan. Qul anfiqu taw'an aw kurhan. The other remaining, they read it as fatha. So, Asim is reading it as a fatha. Hamalatu ummu kurhan wa da'atu kurhan. Flipped. Ibn Dakwan and Asim are both reading it as what? Kurhan. The other ones are reading as what? Karhan. يعني حمزة الكسائي and all of them are reading it as what كرهن يعني قضية استلقي المشافهة also and also benefits us this issue of الفرش which are, which is the issue I'm talking about that the Quran has usul principles you memorize it you apply it everywhere the فروش are very tricky you need to study it specifically ولذلك الإمام الشاطب في لوك حزب الأماني وجهه تاني في القراءة السبع he starts with the usul he starts with the usul, he finishes the usul, and then he goes through each surah, Baqarah, Ali Imran, Nisa, Hakada, and he goes through all of the furush in there. Another example, you'll see, the word you'll see, the word lafth, you'll see. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he says, he says, min ba'd surah nisa, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he says, min ba'di wasiyyatin yusi biha awdain. Ibn Kathir, and Ibn Amir and Shu'bah, they read it بفتح الصاد. What do they say? من بعد وصية يوصى. They say. Who does that? Ibn Kathir, Ibn Amir and Shu'bah. Okay. What about in uh, Hafs? Hafs, he reads, reads it as what? من بعد وصية يوصي بها أودي. So there's two places it came in the Quran in Surah Al-Nisa, right? The first place it came with Ibn Kathir and Ibn Amr and Shu'bah in Surah Al-Nisa. It came in two places. Ibn Kathir, Ibn Amr and Shu'bah both read it as what? من بعد وصية يوصي بها أودي. The second place it came with. Who agreed with them in reading as you uh, saw? Who agreed with them in the second one? Yani, Ibn Kathir, Ibn Amr, and Shu'ba, both places they're reading it the same. They're reading as you saw. You saw biha uday. Ibn Kathir, Ibn Amr, and Shu'ba. Ibn, whereas Hafs is reading as what? Min ba'di wasiyati, min ba'di wasiyati, you see biha uday. Like in the second place it came in, Hafs agreed with Ibn Kathir, Ibn Amr, and Shu'ba. Okay, whereas the other remaining, they already as kasra in both places. وذلك الإمام الشاطبي رحمه الله said ويوصي بفتح الصاد الصحة كما دنا ووافق حفص في الأخير مجملة that حفص in the second place he agreed with the فتح of ابن كثير and ابن عامر الشعبة whereas the other قراء they remained upon both positions by reading as kasra. حفص look at it. It's غير مطرد. It's a فرش in حفص. The one time you're saying you see, which is a موضع الأول. موضع الثاني you're 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 agreeing with ابن كثير من عامر الشعبة and you're reading as you saw بها ودي. That is what the scholars call الفرش. لذلك these three words are from the فروش in the Quran. What are they? ملك أم مالك. كرهن أو كرهن. You'll see or you saw. Both uh, we find it changing in different places. How do you hold it down and how do you understand it? You have to study independently. But like some of the Qur'a, subhanAllah, they don't start with the usul when it comes to teaching. They actually teach the student the farsh and then they go to the usul. Some do that. Um, some scholars they do that. The early scholars now, who wrote in Qiraat like Ibn Mujahid and others, 
when it came to Abu Bakr ibn Mujahid and others, when it came to the usul and the farsh, they never used to div divide it like that. Yani they didn't say this is the usul, this is the farsh. They didn't do that. لذلك Abu Bakr ibn Mujahid, he discusses the, if you read his sab'a, he starts with the Qur'an in the way that the Qur'an is written and he mentions the usul and the farsh as he goes on. And if he's spoken about it in one place, when he comes to it in another surah, he'll always tell you, I discussed it there. So there is no yani, distinguishing saying this is the usul, this is the farsh, in the way that we see it today. The first person to actually do it like that and categorize and these are, say these are the usul, these are the farsh, and the usul are qa'idah uh, muttaridah, and the farsh is that which is not qa'idah muttaridah, and give it, break it down like that. They say the first person to do it is Al-Imam uh, Al-Daraqutni, Rahimahullah. Al-Imam Al-Daraqutni, Sahib Al-Sunan, he was the first person to actually do that. He divided between the usul and the farsh. And so he's considered the first person to do that. But that everyone who came after him, like Al-Imam Abu Amr al-Dani, when he wrote his kitab al taysir he divided the usul and the farsh. If you look at the Hirz al-Amani, which is a nadm of the taysir of Abu Amr al-Dani, he does that. He breaks it into usul and the farsh. And it became uh, uh, the, the way of the Qiraat after Al Imam Al Daraqutniyu came, Rahimahullah. I'm going to stop there, inshallah ta'ala, for this episode. Uh, I hope you have benef benef benefited. Anything I might have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and Shaytan, and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward? of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel. Simple, like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users. And imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like, or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.